So maybe ningetaka kusema nimefurahi sana. Because you know if we had not won this election this one I would have been one of your subjects. <laughs> so sisi tunashukuru Mungu because in the previous administration the powers that be had decided to use a criminal justice system to set us course politically to punish people who have done no crime and force them and blackmail them to make certain decisions so myself I was being blackmailed to abandon president william ruto and join azimio and i refused and they said the criminal justice against me and they were forcing the magistrate to jail me for 20 years in the committee so tunasema mungu de mwema lakini hata kama angetufunga si tungekuja tu tukae huko na nyinyi and I want to say it is very bad. It's unforgivable to use the criminal justice system to punish innocent people. The penal institutions are for people who need to be corrected. They are not for punishing people. You cannot use the criminal justice system to punish innocent people, to send them to the penal institutions for the purposes of punishing them. And we are glad that there are some judicial officers who are very firm, very firm in ensuring that the rule of law is upheld. In my case, the magistrate was being forced to jail me without any evidence. And he was under pressure. A gun was held over his hand. And when he looked and realized there was no evidence, and I think after he listened to what is happening in the country, he decided the case should only be heard after the elections. <laughs> and he put it in September. And the DPP was forced to appeal that decision to hear it in September. And he declined, he said it should be heard in September. Because he knew the new government would stop that nonsense. And when we won, the DPP went back to court and said, I had no evidence against this man, I was being forced. We want to say, we want to appeal to our law enforcers in the police force, in the prosecution, and in the penal institutions. Be fair. Be fair to your fellow human beings. If you are a prison officer, don't beat inmates because they are there and harass them. Already they have been confined. That is enough punishment. Denial of liberty is enough punishment. You don't know, need to go beyond there. Handle those people with empathy and understanding. Let me tell you, P.S. Let us improve these penal institutions when we have the opportunity. You never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. Anybody is a potential client of a penal institution. Isn't it? Those of us who have the responsibility to improve these penal institutions, let us do so. Let us improve them. Even if you don't go there, your own sister could fight herself there. Your own brother, your own child. Hospital and prison are potential homes to anybody. Never laugh at people because they are sick. You never know. When you hear somebody has a harambe, unamuchekelea ya bila hospital, you don't know. Unasikia mtu wamefungwa jela, unasema oke sawa. Wewe ujui. You could even commit a crime unintentionally. You go and knock somebody with a vehicle. You are prosecuted for being uh, negligent, causing death through accident driving. A magistrate decided to jail you for six months. Unaesa kwa na uchukue deni ya mutu kwa suwe kulipa. Ukue committed to civil jail for six months. Uende pale. Na watu wengi sana ni potential candidates ya hiyo ya civil jail. Ya kuchukua madeni nini nini nini. Hata huyu sene na huyu chinakai tukekua na evia. Huyu. Halikuwa mutu ya kushikuwa kila Friday. 
<laughs> you know. So let us ourselves, all of us, be fair people. There was a man, minister called Stanley Aloitiptip. He was a minister for home affairs during the Kenyatta era. It's good I tell you that story. He never did anything for the prisons. He was told there are no mattresses. He asked why prisoners want mattresses. He was told there are no blankets. He said they should sleep on the floor. He was told food and ration is not sufficient. He said if they wanted to eat food, they should not have committed the crimes. They should have stayed at home. As fate would have it, he committed a crime, but not a serious one because of politics. He was jailed for one year. He was a huge fellow, extremely huge. So when he arrived at the committee, there was no uniform that could fit him. <laughs> so they had to get about six uniforms and stitch them in the prison industry for him. Then he was taken to the cell. Then he asked, where is the mattress? Have you akuna? Na blanket? Akuna? The prisoner had told him, you yourself, you sit in parliament, that there is no need for mattress or blanket in prison. Sasa waja saya chakula ifike. Sinide na wekwa kama nukutupo. Aka uliza sasa hii mimi ilaweza shiba, he was a huge fellow. Aka ambiwa you said, there is no need to have sufficient food in prison. What am I saying? you are in a position of responsibility to make life better for mankind. Please do so. You never know. <laughs> so I want to encourage you and assure you that your things are in good space. Be patient. We'll start the implementation of the recommendations effective from July next year. Mutapata Nyongesa. Let us not use money like you will be working throughout. You must know that one day you retire, end up in a society, save Pesayako, start a small project, so that you also prepare for retirement because you will be there forever. That is my advice to our officers, that uh, be prudent in how you do your things, make savings. You need those savings as you go along. Otherwise, I want to say I was very impressed by the testimony of the two people here, the ex-inmates, and really it shows that the corrective services are working, and I want to encourage you to continue rehabilitating and reforming the people put under your care by the justice system, and you wait to society, you wait to God to take care of them, and make them better people. I will look for the officials of the Magaresa Society so that I also put some money there so that we increase our shares of our society and together we can build that society together because it has helped me well. I took about four loans and uh, the house where I live today in Karen, I bought it through a loan from Magaresa. You know, I saved. I saved, I saved, I saved, and I was able to, 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 to put a deposit for, for the house. So I really want to encourage you to continue working hard, continue taking care of these people, continue reforming our citizens, and God will be kind to you and also take care of you in your endeavors. With those very many remarks, I wish you a very successful conference, very successful correctional uh, service week, and may God bless you and bless you abundantly. Thank you very much. Next up, Chief His Excellency, the Deputy President, Your Excellency, we request you to.